everybody. Welcome back to Garage Quest. Uh, I am May, and today I'm starting a brand new series of tutorials uh, for tabletop RPG players. And the first natural inclination, of course, is to talk about dice. Today's video is going to be about getting your own master dice set made and then how to sand and polish them so that they're ready to cast a mold. This here is an example of a sanded and polished custom sharp edge D20. As you can see, my logo is on the 20 face there. Now, uh, when you get your dice, unless you uh, pay extra, your dice, your master dice will not arrive like this. Typically, if you go through a vendor like um, the vendor I use is uh, Blue Mimic. The Blue Mimic, I highly recommend you use them if you want to get custom dice made. They're great. One of the things I love about them is if you end up breaking some, they'll replace them free of charge. So uh, shout out to the Blue Mimic and thank you, thank you, thank you so much for all the favors you've done for me. But uh, so when you get your dice, unless you want to pay extra, they're not going to come fully sanded and polished like this. But you do need your dice to be fully sanded and polished like this before you make molds of them. Because if you don't, then the resin that you cast in those molds won't come out polished. And the more perfectly sanded and polished your master dice are, the less work you'll have to do on the back end. So today I'm gonna show you how to get from here to here. And uh, it's pretty simple. It just takes a little bit of your time and a few quick materials. So without any further ado, let's talk about what you need. Okay, so this is first and foremost, what you're gonna need is your masters. Um, again, this is a master that I've already sanded and polished, but today we're gonna make this little baby sparkle. So let's pull this guy out. Then you're also going to need some 600 grit sanding paper. Uh, I use this Duragold uh, wet dry sheets there's, it comes with a lot of them. Let me open them up here. There's a lot in here. I, I think I've used two and I run my own shop. So uh, you can really get a lot of good use out of these. And when you pull one out, it looks like this. You're also gonna want a flat surface. So I have here just a piece of glass from a picture frame that I'm not using. I'm gonna move this out of the way here. You're gonna to wanna to put that flat surface down and put your uh, wet 600 grit sandpaper right down on that surface. And then you're gonna need just a cup of water. So first thing we're gonna do is give every face on this die uh, a quick sanding just so it's a little smoother on this 600 grit paper. Um, one thing I like to do is start with the one and go from there. So I'm gonna start with my logo. And what I do is I just dip, I'll make this more visible for you here. Dip, tap, dip, tap, till there's a nice little pool there. And then we're gonna go in circles. Now when you do this, it's important that that face say, stay as evenly flat on this paper as possible. So you want to apply pressure evenly as you move around. You'll, you'll get the hang of it, but if you're new to it, you might want to pick it up, make sure you're not sanding off an edge. Um, you don't want to do that to your masters. So we'll just get this going. And that's about as good as you need to do at this grit. We're gonna move on to another grit after we get all these faces done. So I'm gonna pop out here, finish this up, and then I'll check back in when we move on to the next uh, set. <laughs> All right, 
so now you can see this guy is a little bit smoother. You don't see all those printed lines as easily as you did before, but it's still nowhere near where we want it to be. So now we move on to polishing. Okay, so now that we have our math rock polished, uh, not polished, it's not polished. We're gonna polish it, it's not polished. So now that we have our math rock sanded down to a decent uh, grit, we're gonna polish it. So the first thing you're gonna need when you are ready to polish are polishing papers. They usually come in a set and they are different colored papers, each one a finer and finer grit. Now the most popular one to use and the one I recommend are called Zona papers. I'm gonna show you my set. <clears throat> they don't normally come this way. Um, you can see they come in much larger pieces of paper than I have here. Uh, and there is what, I think one, two, three, four, maybe eight of them. Um, but uh, I have a little trick. Uh, so I will get to that later, but it involves me cutting pieces of this out. So uh, it won't come to you like this, and you definitely don't have to cut it up like I do, um, but, but I find it really useful. So if you want to, you can just lay these papers down one at a time. You start with the first one, uh, this dark green guy. You lay it down and similarly to the 600 grit, you're just gonna wet your dice and start sanding. If you do that, you're gonna wanna sand, I'd say for a full minute. Um, and uh, that tends to be about 100 strokes, 100 circles. I recommend the circle method because some people go up and down and left and right and um, some people don't have rhythm. Mm. Uh, you gotta be smooth with it. So, so I, I recommend the circle method. Uh, but I found that that takes for f***ing ever. So uh, instead of hand doing this, what I do is I bought myself this sweet little mini pottery wheel. Now, I will say this. I bought a very similar looking pottery wheel to this one that was rose gold in color. Um, and it was awful and I had to return it immediately. They sent me a second one. That one didn't work either. I returned it. Then I found a completely different brand that makes a nearly identical product. And this one has never failed me. So you do have to be a little bit careful. These are very popular. Um, but I don't know how dependable they are. Uh, nevertheless, getting a really small pottery, pottery wheel like this has changed my life. So what I do, I'm gonna go ahead and pull this down and I will show you how I go about sanding and we're gonna finish off this guy. Here we go. All right, so I'm gonna get some tape got some nice shitty dollar store pink tape here so you can see what I'm doing. And then I've gone ahead and already cut a square piece off of each sheet, okay? Now it's really important that you always keep your Zona papers in order. So when you're done with one, turn it over and move to the next one. Because if you get them out of order, you are likely to polish out of order and that does nobody nothing. All right, so I start with my first guy here. Uh, some people will stick this on just with a little dab of water. I, 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 I find that unreliable, I'm not doing that. So let's do tape. That was too much tape. That was way, way too much tape. More like this, this is a good amount of tape, all right. So I'm just gonna put it a little bit on the zona paper and a little bit onto the wheel, give it a nice brandishing and then tuck it under. And I'm gonna do that to each side. Now I typically, this tape doesn't hold particularly, part particularly 
very well when you are working with something that gets wet. So uh, you will just want to keep your tape nearby because you'll have to replace these pieces a lot. I'm just going to use this tiny guy that's stuck to my finger because he wants to get involved. Okay, then we're going to take our water and I just, you know, I just stick them in there and then uh, give it a nice massage so it gets a little bit wet. You don't need it soaking wet, but you do need it wet enough. <laughs> and you're just going to have to figure it out yourself. So then I turn this on the highest speed. It's not that fast, but, uh, and then I'm just gonna start. I'm gonna start with my uh, one face, which is my logo. I get a good grip on it, dunk it in the water. And then we're just gonna evenly and carefully go around. I try and go uh, right between the center and the edge in a full circle, and that's it. Now if you look at this, it's already a lot smoother just from that first zone of paper. Um, now you don't want to move in the same direction as this is spinning. Uh, sometimes I accidentally turn it the other way and then I go to do my typical clockwise motion and it's complete anarchy. So uh, don't do that. Things will go flying. Your dogs will go running. Children will be screaming. It's, it's, uh, it's a bad evening for everyone. So don't do that. So you really just wanna get as close to the edge as you can without interfering with the pieces of tape. Um, I have had Zona papers go flying that's okay. If that happens, that's normal. That's just how it goes. But uh, whoop, I got to do all the other faces really quickly. And then we'll move on to the next color and just keep working down the line. <laughs> Every side done. Now we move on to the next Zona paper. So I just pull these beautiful pieces of tape off, grab the next paper, give it that gentle pat. Water. Let's go. Okay, uh, so you're gonna basically do this exact thing for every paper. Now, if you are doing this by hand without the uh, pottery wheel. You're gonna wanna do about 100 rotations by hand or a full minute on each color until you get to the last three Zona papers. When you get to the last three Zona papers, I think those are the uh, pink, blue, and white ones, uh, then you can probably do like 30 seconds, 50 rotations, cause you're really getting down to that fine, fine polish. But uh, I don't have to do any of that because I got the machine working for me. Alexa, kick out the jams. of hell whichever you prefer jewelry forged in the fires of hell you know whatever okay let me bring you up here so now you have uh, a beautifully polished very very flashy uh, little math rock to use to make molds you do this to your entire set and then um, there's a few other steps 
that go from here to the mold making, which I will try and cover in a video as well. Um, if I did it in this video, it would be uh, eras long, and we don't need to do that. We're all living in a world without time as it is right now, and frankly, uh, I don't want to bore you. So uh, that is how you do it. Um, some last minute uh, tips about making masters. Um, do this properly because if you do this properly then when you actually pull out the dice you're casting um, they will be very very shiny like this and the only sides that you will have to do this process for on those dice are the ones that have a little bit of flashing anywhere you cut your mold is likely to cause some flashing along the sides of your dice um, but uh, that ideally is one or two faces, maybe three at worst. So um, so you do this whole process for every set of dice you cast, but um, not for every face. Whereas with masters, you need to do every face. The other thing is, it's very, very trendy to do what's called matte dice, which is where uh, rather than having this flashy sheen, um, they are not completely polished dice. Um, now some people might think, well then I just won't polish my masters because uh, I'm, I don't plan on polishing my dice. And I think that's a mistake. Uh, I know that's a mistake because when you get these masters, if you look closely, there are still tiny fine lines from the printer. So what I recommend if you wanna make matte dice is you still go through this entire process but then when you cast dice in your molds, um, pull them out of your molds, give them a couple days to, to cure fully, and then sand them on just the first zone of paper, the green colored paper, and that will bring your dice back to matte. Now, of course, in that case, you do need to polish every face of every dice, but um, that's what you get with quality. Uh, you, you really don't want to do it the other way around. But hey, you know, who am I to tell you what to do? I ain't no fascist. Uh, yeah. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It's my goal to keep these things as brief, but also as comprehensively informative as possible. And that can be done, I think. So uh, let me know down below in the comments what kind of tutorials about dice you'd like to see. Um, I am going to try and churn these out as often as possible. Thanks, and don't forget to subscribe and go to my Etsy shop, garagequest.etsy.com. Thanks, everybody. Go forth and quest.